Okay, a very similar concept which we will work with just as much as we do position is that of displacement. So I'm going to start by talking about it in two dimensions again because it's a bit easier to conceptualize. So again, let's draw our axes x and y, both in meters. And each little increment can be one, just like before, etc. So imagine that carrot starts at a position of 2, 1. So I'm going to say that the initial position, so I'll put a little i for initial, is equal to 2, 1 meters. So if I just draw that on the graph with a dot, that would be here. x value of 2, y value of 1. Then imagine that carrot just goes through some kind of motion and ends up at a final position of 5, 3. Okay, so that's going to be x value of 5, that's there, and a y value of 3. So the new position is going to be here, the final position. So often we use these i and f subscripts. i is for initial and f is for final. So now we've got these two points and what we're, when we talk about displacement, what we're talking about is essentially an arrow that starts at the beginning and ends at the final one. So this would be my initial point xi, this will be my final point xf. So you can see how the arrow goes basically across by 3 and up by 2. And, and this is what's called the displacement. So the displacement has a certain um, notation to it. So the, dis the notation is delta x. That's just a capital Greek letter delta, that triangle. And it always means the change in something. And you see how my arrow went across by 3 and up by 2? Across by 3 and up by 2 like this? Turns out we can get this by just doing a little bit of maths as well. So we can work it out using our final value minus our initial value. Okay, how does that work? Well, we can use this handy notation. And what we're allowed to do is basically just uh, subtract those di uh, directly. So I take my final position minus my initial position. And when I'm working with these vectors, with the two numbers in the brackets, all I, am, all I have to do is subtract the individual pieces. So first, I'll subtract 2 from 5, so I'll do 5 minus 2. And then I'll do 3 minus 1. And that will give me 3 and 2. And you can see where those values fit on my arrow that I've drawn here. That's a 3. And then it goes across by 3 and up by 2. So it's like what we call the components of this displacement vector. So displacement is a vector. Let's just write some of this down. Um, okay, it's an important word. Um, and when we say that something is a vector, it has two things going on. It has a magnitude, which is how long it is. And it has a direction, which for us is which way the arrow points. So we'll get a bit more technical about direction of vectors later on. But for now, you can kind of see the direction is sort of up and to the right. Um, you, can, you, can, you could figure out an angle using some trigonometry and be a bit more accurate about that. But for now, that will do for our direction. The point is, our vector has a magnitude, which is how long it is. We'll figure that out shortly. And it has a direction, which is across and up. Um, so how do we figure out um, what the magnitude is? Well, let's just work on that, just clear some space. So how to figure out the magnitude? So the magnitude, um, we write this as the length of our displacement delta x by putting, basically just indicating a bar around it. Remember, this is our displacement here. By the way, when I'm underlining these x's, that is how I write vectors. And if I were typing this up, that would just, that would just be bold rather than underlined. So the magnitude of my displacement, well, that's just going to be using some triangle geometry. We've got a triangle with sides 3, 2, and something else. 
Um, and we're just going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude here. So here's our triangle. We'll just call that length of delta x. Um, so Pythagoras' theorem would say that 2 squared plus 3 squared is equal to the length of delta x squared. And so that means that our magnitude is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which will be the square root of 4 plus 9, which is 13 meters. 3 point something meters, bit, which kind of makes sense. A bit longer than 3, a bit less than 4. And like I said, we'll talk more precisely about the angles a bit later on. Okay, well, what about one dimension? Because we're, we're actually going to be focusing mostly in motion, on motion that is in one dimension. So let's just draw our number line again. Well, the thing is, it really works the same way. Um, but I think it's more useful to think about the concept in 2D because when we flatten it down to 1 like this, then our arrows just sit flat on the line. So let's just make up a new motion. Let's just say we have a starting of a starting position of negative 2 meters. And let's say we've got a final position of 3 meters. You can see that our displacement, same idea, we can draw an arrow going from the start to the finish. So that's going to be a displacement of 5 meters to the right. You can kind of just see that from the picture. So let's see how the calculation will work. Well, the calculation will be delta x is my final position minus my initial position. This time, because we're in one dimension, we tend to leave the vector underlining off, but it kind of works the same way. It's just those going to be those two numbers minus each other. So my final position is 3 meters. My initial position is negative 2 meters. Just be careful with our negative signs. So that equals 3 minus negative 2, which is the same as 3 plus 2, which equals 5 meters. Okay, well, where's the direction gone? Well, the direction is basically encoded in the sign of this value. Because this is positive, I can interpret that as moving to the right. Let's do one more. Let's imagine we start at xi equals negative 3. And then we go to final position of negative 5. Then for our green example, our displacement would be my final, negative 5, minus my initial, negative 3, now we've got way too many negative signs going on, <laughs> that's going to be negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2 meters. And you can see that means we are going left. My displacement in this case would be an arrow going from my, final, my initial to my final left, and so the way that shows up in the maths is it shows up as a negative sign. This one here is positive, so this would be a displacement to the right. Uh, one other little technicality is we often represent positions by displacements, which seems weird, um, but it's not really, because we've sort of taken great lengths to keep these things as separate concepts, but actually, let's just do it in, in um, 2D again. Often we like to think of a position, so here's a position, let's just say this is uh, position of 3, 2. We can think of this as a displacement as well um, by just thinking of it as a, a vector that starts at 0, 0 or at the origin. That's why we, uh, so this is a uh, x equals 3, 2. You could also think of this as a change in position from a start point of 0, 0. This is why we were quite happy to use this notation also for our uh, position because, which is the same notation we have for our displacements, just because it really can be thought of as a vector starting from zero and ending up at the position that we're at. So sometimes you'll see a graph where you might see displacement on an axis instead of position, but really it's probably intending to mean exactly the same thing, just we're thinking of the displacement as being from a start point of zero. Right, last concept, uh, we've, we've got a few different words that mean similar things. We've had position, and displacement so far. The final one is distance, and I'm just going to illustrate distance um, in two dimensions again because it's easier to figure out what's going on. Distance is a, what we call a scalar as opposed to a vector. Um, it's a single positive number and it represents how far motion has traveled overall or your object has traveled. 
in total. So th when you're thinking distance, think um, like you're tracking a run or a walk on your watch, or you're tracking how far your drive was on your odometer. That number never goes down, even if you turn around and go back again, it just keeps on counting forward. So let's just draw a bunch of displacements. So let's say we're in 2D, we'll start here. Again, each grid point can just be a length of one. So let's imagine we just do some right angles. It's like we're on a city block. So go up by three, across by four, um, down by two, across by three, down by one, uh, three, sorry, across to the left by five. Um, so let's just put these numbers on just to help us out. For this motion, if this is my starting position, and this is my finishing position here. I've done a number of different hops in between. Um, my total distance would just be three plus four plus two plus three plus three plus five, which is seven plus two is nine plus three is 12 plus three is 15 plus five is 20, which would be 20 meters. And we usually call distance D. But my overall displacement well, when I do all those one after the other, I can still think of this as a single displacement starting from my initial position and ending up in my final position. So my total displacement would be delta x is equal to, let's see, across to the right by two, so it's gonna be plus two. And it's gonna be down by two, so it's going to be minus two in the y coordinate. And you can see my overall displacement is quite small, but my total distance traveled is quite big. So that's the difference between those two words, distance and displacement. Displacement is just final position minus initial position, whereas distance is how far you went on the way from your initial position to your final position. All right, so I think that's about enough for now. Um, we've got these concepts in hand. Next time we're gonna take a wee bit more of a look at vectors and how we can do some mathematical manipulation of them. And then we'll move on to studying velocity after that, which is how fast things go, basically. Kakiteano. See you next time.